All right, jumping on the YouTube page for a quick reaction to Jaime Munguia's win over Eric Bazinian on Friday. As always, we will have a full recap of the weekend on the podcast feed on Monday, so make sure you subscribe to that feed. If you are not yet a YouTube subscriber, hit that subscribe button. We do a lot of instant reaction videos to boxing stuff, to basketball stuff right here on the page uh, every single week. So uh, Jaime Munguia gets back to his winning ways. He stops Eric Bazinian in the 10th round of their fight. And look, I thought coming in that this was the exact right fight for Jaime Munguia. Number one, he got back in the ring pretty quick. And if you look at the history of Canelo Alvarez opponents, whether it's uh, Callum Smith, uh, Billy Joe Saunders, currently Jermel Charlo, they either take forever to get back into the ring or, in the case of Saunders, don't get back in the ring at all. Jaime Munguia is back in the ring right around the same time as Canelo Alvarez was, just a week removed from Canelo's fight. So I think that's good. Getting back in the mix, getting back to your winning ways, or at least trying to, is the right thing to do. And Bazinian, uh, I thought, was the perfect opponent. He was highly ranked by the sanctioning bodies. He was undefeated. And quite frankly, he wasn't very good. Like, I've seen some Eric Bazinian fights most recently his draw in his last fight, and he has just looked very average. C, C-plus level fighter. To me, this is the perfect opponent for Jaime Munguia. There, there was a reason that Munguia's people and Diego Pacheco's people were pushing hard to get Eric Bazzini because everybody wanted to be the first one to knock off that guy. So Munguia came back against the exact right opponent, and he looked like the usual Jaime Munguia. Uh... Munguia was back with Eric Morales for this fight, but it doesn't matter whether Munguia's with Eric Morales, whether he's with Freddie Roach, whether he's just training with his father. Jaime Munguia is Jaime Munguia. He is a volume-punching, high-energy, uh, defensively vulnerable, uh, you know, kind of fun fighter. Like, that's just what he is. And the Bazinian fight was... Uh, like a lot of other fights I've seen with Jaime Munguia. It's like the one I saw with Gabe Rosado, like the one I saw with Sergey Derevinchenko, where Munguia has some outstanding moments. Uh, in this case, the knockout sequence that put Bazinian down and out in that 10th round. And he has times where he looks fatigued, he looks vulnerable, and he takes some shots. And, and Bazinian landed his fair share of shots in this fight. So I, I don't think Jaime Munguia was any better or any worse than what he was before the Canelo fight. There's obviously a chemistry with Eric Morales. They like working together. I expect that relationship to continue. But whether it was Morales or Freddie Roach, this is just who this guy is. He is always going to be offensively oriented. He is going to have a decent jab, uh, and he's going to get hit. And when the going gets tough and the fight gets physical, Jaime Munguia is going to turn back into you know, a, a brawler or a very high-level brawler, uh, at least. So he gets the win. He gets the knockout. Bazinian, I was a little disappointed that Bazinian didn't get off the canvas in the 10th round. Uh, he was down on the scorecards, but it was a close fight. I know Mark Kriegel over at ESPN scored it even through eight rounds. I had a competitive, at least, maybe Munguia up a round or two. Uh, and Bazinian went down, but it, it wasn't over just one heavy shot. It was kind of an accumulation of punches, and he had not gone down before. So... I was disappointed that Bazzini didn't get up and try to finish the fight. But that was exactly what Jaime Munguia needed to get a win, to beat a credible opponent, and put himself right back into the mix for another big fight. Um, and there really is only one big fight. So Jaime Munguia is a top-ranked fighter now. I know there's been some ambiguity about, you know, would he go back to Golden Boy uh, or would he stay with top rank? My understanding is that Jaime Munguia is with top rank for the foreseeable future. And if that's the case, there is only one pathway. And that pathway is straight to Christian Mbili. Christian Mbili, who we saw just about a month ago, taking on Sergei Dervinchenko, beat Dervinchenko by decision. He's on the same timeline as Munguia. He is with the same promoter, effectively, as Munguia. He's been fighting on the same platform now, ESPN, as Munguia. There is no reason that this fight shouldn't happen in January or February of 2025. Both these guys are 
I don't know what the rankings are will be next month, but like one and two in multiple sanctioning bodies. They should be fighting for an interim title at 168. Maybe it'll be a vacant belt, but they should be fighting. That is a big fight, and it's a great fight because Munguia and Mbili are just two offensively oriented fighters. They are come forward, take no prisoners, throw a lot of punches types of fighters, and that's going to make for a great fight. Now, for top rank, you've got to make sure that Munguia gets that because Munguia and his team, uh, Fernando Beltran, who's been guiding his career for, for most of it, uh, they have done a masterful job of convincing promoters and convincing networks to pay pretty good money for pretty bad fights. You look at Munguia's resume, not awful, especially towards the last couple of years, but he's got a lot of Jimmy Kelly's on there. He's got a lot of Spike O'Sullivan's on there. He's got a lot of C and D level opponents that he's getting paid real money to fight in main events. That's got to stop. Like this relationship with Top Rank, if it does not you know, lead directly, and I'm not talking about two fights down the road. I'm talking next fight. If it does not lead directly to Christian Mbili, Top Rank's got to say no because they get nothing out of Jaime Munguia in another B-level fight. They, they, they gain nothing from having to pay for Christian Mbili to fight someone like Sergey Derevchenko. These two guys need to get into the ring, and the winner, if it's Jaime Munguia, if it's Christian Mbili, will certainly be in the mix for, I don't know if it's going to be a shot at Canelo, but for the right to be called the number one, number two guy at 168 pounds. Then you can look around and say, look, I'm the money man in a fight with Caleb Plant in a fight against Edgar Berlanga. We know how good super middleweight is right now. Berlanga had a better-than-expected showing against Canelo. Caleb Plant, fun fighter, looked pretty good in that win over Trevor McCombie. Some good names at 168. Jamal Charlo might find his way back into the mix. But right now, Jaime Munguia, Christian Mbili. If if these guys don't want to take it, top rank should not offer either one of them fights because I don't think they gain anything from seeing those two guys in against each other. So good win for Jaime Munguia. Right fight, right opponent, right outcome. Now he moves on, and that path better lead to Christian Bailey because any other fight uh, is just simply unacceptable.